Hello everybody, welcome back to Devs on Devs. And today we have a very lovely guest in the house, uh, Ire Adenuroku. Um, did I pronounce the name well? <laughs> Wrong, oh my God. Okay, she's gonna get a chance to correct me. But in the meantime, I wanna tell you about this awesome lady. It's like she's a Google developer expert. You know, she's a CEO at Bycoins. Um, and you know, she's been an inspiration for a lot of uh, developers out there, especially uh, women folk. I mean, I, 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 I love her blog. I love what she does. And I, I mean, I love how active she is and how, you know, um, enthused she is about helping out other people. So um, without much further ado, Ire. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having Hi. me. Um, so that day, Ryoko, you said uh, no hope. You shall I, like me. I murdered it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so and it's I'm supposed to be. <laughs> It's Adirio Kun, and then Adirio Kun, or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, um, and then I'm the CEO of Bycoins, not CTO. Yeah. Apologies. So CEO of Bycoins, I stand corrected. <laughs> All right. Um, welcome back to the show. I, I know we did a recording before, and I lost that footage. Yes. Very sad. <laughs> um, but we're here again, and you graciously joined us from the abroad and um, you know joining in via skype as everyone can see so uh let's start with you know your background and your history right how did you get into coding how did you get you know start doing software development okay um well i started i guess when i was a teenager i used to be obsessed with this online game called nibets and it had some very basic html i guess at the time because i don't even think css was really a thing at the time so it was just kind of my introduction into writing some code and being able to see like the end results and i just like just really got into it i started just doing extra sites on the side and then whenever i had a friend that had some project i was i was always like oh let me make your website things like that so it was just something i was doing as a hobby a lot and i didn't even really know it was something i could have done as a job so I didn't even consider it when I was picking what I wanted to do at university. So I ended up studying psychology for my undergraduates, then law for my master's. So I was just completely different, not even <laughs> considering it. But it was while I was studying my master's that I actually even really discovered computer science and what they were actually doing. Because obviously I had heard of it, but I don't think we really had those types of maybe careers days where they come and explain to you what all these different things are. So I just heard the phrase computer science and it didn't even occur to me to try and connect the dots. <laughs> and, um, so when I like rediscovered that, I was like, oh, wow, this is something that I've been so passionate about for as long as I can remember, really. And um, I wanted to try and give it a shot. And I knew I didn't want to do like a third degree. <laughs> so I just <laughs> thought I would try and teach myself. So just continuing to do what I was already doing and then doing a bunch of like online courses, reading other people's blogs. And that's also what inspired me to start my own blog. I want to ask nitty gritty questions, you know, uh, like things like, you know, what, what do you use on a daily basis? What, what's your tool stack? What, you know, do you um, develop with, right? How do you contribute to your uh, organization, to buy coins uh, as an engineer and also as the VP of engineering? Tell me about your day-to-day -day life. Okay, so... Um, for most of Bycoins, um, we're now almost like three years. So I'll say for the first two years, maybe up to two and a half years, I was the only front end engineer. So I was just doing basically all of the front end engineering. And luckily, which I'm very grateful for, we now have other people. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to be able to like work with other people that are also really passionate about this and I can then move from only doing everything myself to also being a person helping like delegate and have other people do stuff and just like reviewing. So now I'll say um, I spend maybe half the time doing like actual code, half the time like reviewing other people's mm. code. Um, in terms of, I mean, do you want me to speak about like our tech stack or just tools? Yeah, that I sure, sure. Yeah, I know Timmy spoke about the tech stack because we've had Timmy on the you know show. Oh, yeah. Guys, if you haven't seen the interview, please go check out Timmy's interview. Shameless plug, but go check it out. <laughs> uh, devs on devs as usual. But yes, he spoke about tech stack. You could speak to that, but also talk about what tools you like to use. You know, I want to know okay. what does your yeah. desk look like. What does your you know what kind of okay. apps do you have on your <laughs> yeah. on your on your laptop that you use for development stuff like that? Okay, so right now. Um, 
we use Ionic. So because we need to mm. have like um, website, Android and iOS applications. So using Ionic was like a nice way to be able to write one thing and then everything, mm. um, it works for everything. In terms of like tools that I use, um, WebStorm is like my editor of choice right now. WebStorm, um, okay. Yes, okay. I know, I know. The thing is, like, <laughs> I like VS Code and all of that other stuff, but I've just found that I've gotten so used to the way WebStorm works. And I know that VS Code is always adding things, so now, they do have a lot of those features that I like, which was just, oh, if you define a function somewhere and you use it somewhere else, you can just click on it where it's being used and it will take you to where you actually defined it and just all of that stuff. But I think I've just gotten so used to it that it's now just like what I use, um, mainly for like the bigger projects that I have. But if I just want to open like an HTML file, I will probably use VS Code because WebSum takes like an hour before it boots. <laughs> so... <laughs> no, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> yeah. Like I read carry on. Like a whole thing. Um, okay. I read an article that Timmy wrote about you know remote work and I loved how he emphasized on asynchronous versus synchronous work because it kind of captured the essence of the conversation and that's how I actually feel you know and I've actually given people advice about you know synchronous versus you know asynchronous communication um, the article was very insightful and you know and now that you mentioned Basecamp again so obviously just confirms you know what what's happening at uh, Bycoins and you know I, I tried moving to it but it costs it costs <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because well, the thing is, I think it, it depends on um, maybe your scale or something. But we found that with having like 10 different tools, it was actually cheaper to just remove them and use Basecamp. So oh. besides still using Notion, which I think in, uh, in, the, in the beginning, we intended to not have to use Notion anymore. But we found that like... Basecamp's writing features aren't really that great. So besides Notion and Basecamp, those are like the two tools we use. And I guess Google Drive, because we always need to have like folders and things. But besides that, we don't really need anything extra. So it kind of helps us just cut back on all those other things instead of having like Slack and then maybe Trello and then, I don't know, a million other things. It's just like mm. useful things. Okay, uh, I want to switch gears a bit. I want to talk about your nano degree program and you know how you started helping uh, developers. I know you're very passionate about helping female developers, you know, grow and nurture them. So tell me, you know, how did that come about? You know, and what's the experience been like so far? Okay. Um, and by the way, tell everyone about the program for those who don't know. Oh, Sorry. okay. Yes, it's just um, I guess a scholarship program to sponsor Nigerian women to do a Udacity nano degree and that's essentially just one of these short courses that um, Udacity offers and they offer courses around tech but it's not necessarily just programming they also have things related to programming so they have like design they have business analytics they just have a bunch of different things in the tech industry but not only just programming right um, so how it started was um, I mean, I actually don't remember how I got the idea in the first place, <laughs> but it just kind of occurred to me that, oh, because I had recently done one of these nano degrees and I thought, oh, it's been actually so useful to me. And um, I'm sure there are a lot of people that would like to do it, but it's quite expensive, right? And I thought, oh, okay, well, I actually have the capacity to sponsor other people to do it. So I thought, okay, why not? And obviously just my experience of very often being the only woman in the room in whatever I was doing I was like okay how can I help other women also join the space so the first year I did it I think I sponsored like seven women and um only about four of them actually completed it so wow. that was kind of disheartening because I thought oh I fully expected all of them to complete it because I was like why wouldn't you complete it and there were various reasons that they weren't able to do it but um i and actually after that i was pretty unsure about whether i wanted to continue it again because it just kind of seemed like kind of i mean i know four people completed but i was just like that's not a very good um, success rate <laughs> but um it wasn't until after one of 
the people who did complete. I think she was talking at a conference and she just talked about how it actually really helped her. That I just realized that, well, I mean, still try and do it if I can. So I decided to do it again for the second time. And that was actually a lot better because all of the, I think it was 10 women that I did, all of them actually completed it. So I think Woo! I just sort of, I know it was really good. <laughs> so I think I kind of tried to streamline the selection process by how I like actually select people because they fill out an application form. And obviously it's hard to know who's going to be able to complete it, but um, I guess maybe I did better the second time and now i'm going through the third batch so i think i want to try and do it once a year hmm. that's fantastic um i guess maybe not only have i drawn inspiration from that i'm actually thinking of something along the lines maybe not for women alone but you know for people yeah, who I mean, want yeah. to <laughs> but for people who want to uh, learn devops because there are not a lot of devops engineers out there so I, I might draw i mean i'm drawing inspiration from what you're doing but i guess what I wanted to, you know, add or ask on top of that was, um, are you looking for sponsorship for this or is this something that you're just going to keep doing personally as long as you can? Or, you know, if other people come along and say, hey, we want to contribute to help so that you can help more women. Is this something you're open to and you're having conversations? Yeah, so I've been thinking a lot about how to do it because even in this last batch, actually, I had... Um, just people I know personally reach out to me and say, oh, can I help sponsor? So I was able to do 15 people this time because of that, because there were extra people. So I've been thinking and I just haven't really come up with the system yet, but I would like to be able to add more. The thing is that because throughout the program, I actually try to keep up with them. So it's not like I just give them the thing and then I don't talk to them again. <laughs> I'm like okay. checking in with them like every week, every couple of weeks, every month and stuff. So I don't now want it to be like a hundred people because I won't be able to <laughs> keep up with that. So we'll have to be still relatively small, but I am definitely open to having more people, um, having, help, having help from other people to make it better. So. Yeah. So guys, you heard yeah. you, we'll you see exactly, for next exactly. Time. You heard it here. She, <laughs> yeah. um, she's not closed off to you know getting more people involved. So if you're out there and you're watching this and you want to get involved in you know helping you know female developers uh, hone their craft and get better at it, and so that they can be more in the ecosystem, please reach out to her. Um, I think you can easily find her on Twitter. There is this yeah, exactly. famous Sunder Sunder's picture she has refused to take down. Just oppressing Actually, everybody. I did. I recently you did. did? But I should bring okay. it back. Just <laughs> <laughs> bring it back. Oh, it's fine. I did get a chance to beat it, but don't worry about time is coming. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, we're about wrapping this up. So do you have any advice, you know, you want to tell, you know, the viewers who are listening, who are watching you, who you know, uh, inspired by you, I want to get to where you are, but don't know the first step they need to take. Do you, do you have anything, word of advice, what, what, you know, just something short, just talk to them. Okay, I mean, I think this is one of those careers where um, if you really want to do it, you, there's not really that much barrier stopping you because even myself, I am like relatively self-taught. It's just through the internet, right? And if you have access to the internet, you can, learn everything that you need to learn so you just have to kind of maybe remove the mindset that you need someone to tell you it's okay to do it and just start doing it and the best way to enter the industry is to i guess enter the industry that's a weird way to phrase it but <laughs> the <laughs> way to get a job is to just start doing the work like build up your portfolio yourself you don't need to wait until somebody gives you a job to do something you can just actually start doing it so yeah, that's why. All I was. right, <laughs> all right. You heard it here first, guys. So um, thank you so much, Iri, for joining us. Thank you for gracing us with your time. Thanks everyone for watching. This was Devs on Devs. If you liked the video, please don't forget to hit the subscribe and the notification bell icon so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. Until next time, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Yeah.